Hi, so I was gone for a long time. This was the longest time I've been gone from the channel since I really started uploading frequently. So this was a very strange experience for me. The last time I sat down to film was probably a month ago, maybe even longer than that, which is very weird. <laughs> so if you're not following me on Instagram, which you should if you're not, it probably seemed like I just disappeared from the face of the earth with no context as to what happened. If you were following me on Instagram, I did give a little bit of updates here and there on what was happening, but I was mostly gone from there as well. The reason I was gone is in the title. I was writing my dissertation and today we're gonna talk about that. So if you didn't know, I am currently in my last year of university or I just finished it I guess and as part of my final year I needed to write a dissertation and also create a project for that and a dissertation is like a final year giant research paper that's like 10 to 12 thousand words and for my course I also needed to do a project with it and to keep things interesting for myself I decided to write mine on friendship bracelets which was awesome <laughs> and a great decision. So the course that I was studying was games design and development. Basically I was learning how to create video games for three years and that was incredibly interesting because it has elements of visual design, visual storytelling, animation, film, that kind of stuff because there are a lot of cutscenes in video games and you need to learn how to create films essentially which has massively helped me do my YouTube because we use a lot of video editing software and I just have a lot of background knowledge on how to film correctly, I guess, even though I don't always set up my shots here properly, but whatever. <laughs> but not only that, we did a lot of animation, we did some motion graphics, sound design, and a lot of coding. A lot, a lot of coding programming. Mostly throughout the year we used C Sharp, which is a programming language. I don't even know why I'm saying that, but maybe somebody is interested. And so our dissertation, we needed to do a project and I wanted to link it to bracelets somehow. And so I came up with an idea and I contacted the admin on bracelet book and I asked him if he would be okay with me creating a friendship bracelet generator for bracelet book. And he said yes. So this is my way of letting you guys know that bracelet book is getting an all new pattern generator really soon. So you might not know unless you've actually tried to generate patterns yourself before, but the way that the generator currently works on bracelet book is you have to type in the orders of the colors and then you have to type in the knots sort of manually. So you type in an F for a forward knot, B for a backward knot, FB for forward backward, BF for backward forward, and zero for null knot. So when you are creating the pattern you only have the letters to go off of and you only really see the pattern once you click generate and it generates the pattern based on the text that you entered. And so for some people People, that's fine but for others it's very difficult to actually create a pattern because it can be really confusing when you don't have a visualization of what you are creating so I wanted to create a generator that is entirely visual that you have a pattern and you can click it to change it so you can see everything that is happening so that is what I did with the help of the admin now to actually make this project into a dissertation I had to put it in a context of a research paper so my dissertation was titled uh, an investigation into how interactive systems affect life learning. The thing that I was investigating was basically how an interactive system, the generator, it is a system that you can interact with by clicking it and changing it, affects your learning. And in this specific case, what I meant by learning is learning how bracelets are structured and how bracelets are created. And I genuinely think that by playing around with the generator, if you don't understand how patterns work, you can start to figure out how they work just from playing with the generator. Unfortunately, because of the current world situation, I wasn't actually able to test my my theory, which sucks because I couldn't really come to a reasonable conclusion of my dissertation. And that worries me because at the moment I actually don't have the grade back yet, so I don't know if my markers are gonna even like what I did, but trying not to stress about that. I mean, the way I worked around it is I basically explained what I would have done. Uh, I created a questionnaire and what I would have done is I would have done a group of people who came in and tested the product, some of which were experienced in bracelets, some of which were complete newbies, and then I would have given them a questionnaire to fill in and give feedback on the product and on their learning as well. And I basically explained how I would have analyzed that data to come to a conclusion whether interactive systems affect learning at all. Yeah, the current situation kind of messed that up for me. And some of you might be wondering, why didn't you give it to us to test? I can't do that. First of all, because me and the admin didn't want to let you guys know that this was happening in case I wasn't able to produce a generator. We didn't want to get your hopes up to then have them be let down. But second of all, I can't 
test my product on people outside of the university without filling out a giant sort of ethical form and submitting it to the ethics board and having them review it, especially if the reviewers are going to be underage, which I'm assuming a lot of you guys are. So I couldn't really do that because if I wanted to submit it to the ethics board, I had to do that in January. And in January, I thought I was going to be able to test it on my peers at university, but whatever. So yeah, that kind of put a wrench in my plans. But nonetheless, I did create a product. And I will be demonstrating how to use the generator, but that will be in a separate video at a later point. Today I mostly want to talk to you guys about how I created it. And that was difficult, to say the least. So I started off by contacting the admin and asking him if he was even open to that idea, if that would be something that could work. Because I've never really created a website before, I wasn't entirely sure how a product that I could create would be able to be integrated into an already existing website, but he explained to me that if I use a very specific technology, which was HTML and JavaScript, he would then be able to take the code that I produce and integrate it into the website. So we settled on that and he gave me some CSS code to make my generator look like the patterns that he already has and CSS is basically styling so he gave me the code to draw the circles for the knots a specific way he gave me the code to make the arrows look exactly the same like the patterns on bracelet book the strings look the same as the ones in the patterns on bracelet book so he basically gave me the styling for the generator to make it look the same and he was great he was extremely helpful to me and I'm super super grateful to him because I definitely wouldn't have been able to produce what I did without his help that being said I did do a lot of the work myself and I did the logic of the strings. I'm gonna get into that. That broke me. But he helped me a lot in trying to sort of take this big task that was in front of me and break it down into pieces that I was able to do, I guess. And he also helped me fix a ton of my mistakes because the amount of times I forget to put like a semicolon or I add an extra comma or a bracket somewhere is annoying and anybody who codes understands me that is the most annoying thing especially when you spend like an hour and a half trying to figure out why your code isn't working and then you realize that oh there's an extra bracket somewhere anyway he helped me with a lot of that and just in general he guided me sort of in in the directions where I needed to Go. He also helped me fix up some stuff at the end, which I wasn't able to do. So basically, yeah, what I'm saying is he helped me immensely. So this is sort of a product that we created together, I guess. But yeah, we started off with taking the CSS code and trying to make the program generate a pattern from that. So we started off by making the knots. So as I said, in the current generator, you need to input text. So if you wanted to make a candy stripe, you would input like a bunch of forward knots, a bunch of F letters with commas separating them. So we took that input and from that input we tried to generate knots. And this step was actually probably the easiest part of the entire thing. The way the text, the way the pattern, the F letters, were stored was basically a matrix. So a double array, a nested array. If you don't understand what I'm saying, it doesn't really matter, but it's basically a matrix where you've got rows and columns. And to generate those knots, you just have to cycle through the rows and the columns and input the knots, separating them a certain amount of pixels horizontally and a certain amount of pixels vertically. That step was actually relatively easy to do. And we very quickly have a bunch of knots on the screen which were automatically generated by the program. I so badly want to share this right now and like post it to my Instagram story and something. Scream about it from the rooftops because I spent so long trying to get it this way. It finally looks like this. <laughs> Doesn't look like much but still <laughs> I'm so happy. And you could also change the knots like put a backward knot somewhere and it would regenerate the entire thing to fit that. That was simple. <sighs> The strings, the strings broke me. The strings broke me because, think about a pattern, right? Think about a pattern and imagine a knot. So there are two strings, right? Color A, color B, and there's a knot between them. Depending on the knot type, these strings are either going to change direction. So if it's a forward knot or a backward knot, the string that comes in on one side is gonna come out of the other side. And same for the other one, if it came in at this side, is gonna come out of the other side. If it is a forward backward knot or a backward forward knot, the strings are gonna come in and come out on the same side. If it's a null knot, they also stay in the same position, but whatever, ignore null knots for now. So the string position, the way the strings end up on either side depends on the knot and that is the case for all of the knots in the entire pattern and if you change one knot at the very top of your pattern that one knot if it goes from like a forward knot to a forward backward knot it reverses the strings and affects the entire pattern below so you might have a case where there is like a backward forward knot that goes into a bunch of forward knots after it and if you change that the colors change and that affects the entirety 
of the strings that goes after it and the entire pattern. This already sounds complicated, but the way to code that was such a pa I spent so long trying to figure out how to properly code that and to make it work because everything in the pattern depends on things that come before it. And that was a lot. That was very difficult to wrap my head around and to figure out how to properly write. And I'm not even talking about the fact that on every other row you have strings that go off to the sides and they're not attached to any knot at all. That was a challenge in itself. <laughs> but whatever. I ended up working around this by giving each of the strings at the very top an ID number. And out of the matrix that we already had of the knots, the double nested array, I created another array on top of that and then another array on top of that so in the end I think I had five or four times nested array something like that which was it broke my brain to try to coordinate that and I ended up writing a bunch of papers with diagrams trying to keep track of everything I don't know how programmers professional programmers don't do that I cannot program if I don't have a visual so I tried to create diagrams of everything and trying to visualize all of the nested arrays because they were killing me <laughs> but I assigned each of the strings an ID number and each of the knots apart from the type of the knot I also assigned left string input right string input left string output right string output so each knot had four variables, string going in from the left, string going in from the right, and strings coming out. And those variables, those boxes, I guess, they held the string's ID. So I registered the ID number of each of the strings coming in and out of each individual knot. And then based on that, and based on the type of knot, and whether or not, whether or not, <laughs> it reversed the strings, or it kept them on the same direction, on the same side, I then passed those ID numbers to the next knots in the next row. Which sounds kind of simple. Now that I'm saying it out loud, it does sound pretty simple, but when I'm telling you that took me so long to figure out how to do and to properly code and to properly program it to work, I'm, I'm telling you that nearly broke me. I, I was so stressed out about the entire thing. I was psyching myself out because I thought that I there is no way that I can ever get this done. I got myself in too, in too deep and I wasn't able to produce what I wanted to produce, but I ended up pulling through and we actually managed to create that with some help from the admin as well. He fixed some errors that I was having and he also made my code a little bit better by showing me that I was doing too much, that there were some places where I was putting conditions that I was putting like two conditions or three conditions which could have been condensed into one. So he explained and showed me how I can make it better. And in the end, we created something that looked terrible. <laughs> it kind of worked. All the middle strings worked. It took some uh, some brain rattling to figure out why that was going wrong. And I quickly realized that the string was probably taking coordinates from other strings because I wasn't passing the coordinates correctly. So without going into too much detail, I fixed that. And finally, we managed to create a pattern with automatically generated strings and automatically generated knots. Now that that was done, it was still not clickable. It was just generated. So we fixed up the colors. We made the colors all look the same. But yeah, then we made the knots click. We, we made the knots clickable and when you click on the knot it cycles through all the types of knots so it goes from like forward to backward to backward forward forward backward and then null might be a slightly different order I don't actually remember we made it clickable and it worked and it was awesome after that point it was actually easy the hardest thing was the string coordinates after that we added the buttons to increase rows decrease rows increase strings decrease strings we also added the color function to change the colors of all the strings and that was that <laughs> and I submitted that as my project for my dissertation. I wrote the dissertation. It was just the most stressful time period of my life, <laughs> I think. But yeah, at the time of recording, the generator is not fully integrated into Bracelet Book yet. There are still some things that we need to do. The main thing that comes to mind is we need to be able to add strings by one instead of by two because the current generator supports that. And the generator that I created has to support all of the features that the current generator supports to be able to fully integrate onto Bracelet Book. So there are still some things to finish up. I am super, super, super excited to see your guys' reaction to the generator and to see how you guys use it and how you play around with it. I hope that that sort of gives a spike in new patterns on Bracelet Book because I know for a fact that there are a lot of people who want to create patterns but are really confused by the generator currently existing on Bracelet Book and so they never do. And I know that because you guys reach out to me and so many of you this past year reached out to me and asked me to create a tutorial on how to use the current generator 
and I ignored you so hard. <laughs> I wanted to say something but I ignored you because I don't want to create a tutorial for the generator if I am working on a new generator. I would much rather create a tutorial for the new generator, you know what I mean? Which is gonna happen. Uh, once the generator is live, which again may or may not be now at the time you're watching this, I'm not sure, I will also create a video explaining how to use the generator and how to create patterns, I guess. So I am very much looking forward to that and I'm so glad to be back. I am so glad to be back. I missed you guys so much. That was the longest time I've ever been away from making these videos and I haven't knotted in like two months. There was no April wrap up. There's not gonna be a May wrap up because I didn't do anything in April or May in terms of bracelets. I basically haven't knotted properly since my 24 hour bracelet challenge and that was ages ago. That started before quarantine, didn't it? No, it wasn't during quarantine, but it was like the first week of quarantine. I missed my bracelets. So I'm super excited to be back there. It's a ton of videos that I'm planning to produce for you guys and the challenge is coming back I promise it's not gonna be the next video or the one after that but it's coming soon um, I'm gonna film it now but it's gonna be posted later what else was I gonna say I think that's it I think that is it thank you guys so much for watching and a huge thank you to my patrons there has been a rise of patrons actually in this past month which is surprising because I was gone <laughs> where did you guys come from I don't know but I am very grateful and I'm very very happy to have you you guys on board. I usually shout out my patrons in the video but there are so many of you guys now that I don't think I can even do that so I'm just gonna put your names on screen and I hope you know that I am super super grateful. Thank you very much for becoming a patron and if you also want to become a patron there is a link in the description where you can sign up and get exclusive perks. We just did two rounds of a patron only bracelet competition where you guys can win it's basically winner's choice either a bracelet from me or like a package with some string or something. We might be doing a third round depending on if people People want to participate so if you do want to participate become a patron join us on discord that is where we are holding the challenges the competition and let me know if you want a round three because I'm definitely down for doing that but yeah I think that's all I wanted to say I've been recording for half an hour I am sorry for that haven't filmed in over a month I really wanted to talk to you guys <laughs> anyway thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time bye